trying to figure out different trends to how we can get more viral content. I'm gonna try something out for the group. A little test and see if uh, I can make a cringy IG reel. Yeah, you're gonna make me do this, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Mm -hmm. I'm about to get a bullseye on this sign with this FPV drone. Let's check it out. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm about to rip some packs with my Mavic, DJI Mavic here. I'm about to power loop this uh, thing over here three times. Now, if you've, if you've clicked this video and you're like, man, I can't wait to learn how to get my DJI Mavic Air Avada quadcopter drone to, to look good, good camera footage. Well, that's not what this is about. This is about not casting shadows on yourself with your camera. That's what this is about. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to share some information that I have, some insight into how to make a good video. Essentially, I'm just gonna break down how I will create a video. And maybe you just find that interesting or maybe you'll be able to apply this to your own videos. I don't know and I don't really care. I just feel like I wanna share this information, you know? The first thing that, that you need to do when you are making videos is do this, is dance around. Cause literally right now I'm talking to a lens okay in this entire video i'm gonna try not to swear this is gonna be a family friendly video this is a family friendly drone video okay i'm going to do everything in my power not to swear because i think that the more that you swear in a video i feel like they limit your reach so this video isn't going to have the swearing that my other videos do but one thing i need to do right now before any of that okay i need to get all the swear words out of my system mother Also right now where I'm at, I forgot my uh, ND filter, so sort of just have a high aperture, whatever. It's, it's cool enough, we'll be in the back of my car today. And you know what I like the back of my car for? Cause I can do cuts like this. It's really cool, check it out. Uh, so the first thing that I do is I just record as much as possible. I don't really have an idea. Sometimes I do and it's really loose. So really I'm just filming a lot, trying to find something that can be made into a video. I take all that footage and then I get into the editor and I'm like, all right, let's make a video out of this. Basically just like this. Look right here, there's editor right here. I'm creating this entire video right now. I mean, I had an idea, but I don't really have a script. So one other thing that I, I don't like to do that I see a lot of people do, which is totally fine. If you do this, it's totally fine. You have a video and you realize, oh I forgot to say something or I said something wrong here. So you get your camera out and you do this. Yeah, I'm just editing here. Look, I'm editing. So I'm going to tell you the thing that I'm fixing. Now, personally, this is just my preference. I prefer not to do that, except for in this situation, just because it's relevant. Editing. Hey, I'm editing and this thing happened. I got to change this thing. So now it's relevant. This is actually part of the concept. I thought of all of this ahead of time. When I go into creating a video, I always need to make sure that there's some sort of story and it has to be more substantial than just going to a cool place. One video that I made where I said that the Demibot isn't indestructible. In that video, I had a bunch of footage from when I went to Dayton, but there was no concept, right? I could have very easily just been like, I'm going to Dayton, Ohio, but why would you care? I want to just welcome the entire internet community to Dayton, Ohio. So I sneakily slid the footage in there and said, oh, you have to watch this footage first because it's part of the story of how my Demibot broke. Now, if you want to know the whole story of how this all went down, it all goes back to when I went to Dayton. Kind of was and it kind of wasn't, but I made it that way. And I created the narrative that we that there was like a progress. Another little tip that I like to do is break up shots a little bit, you know, change change visuals, change angles, change positions, camera positions, add in interesting B-roll. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just randomly throw something in there that may not really feel related. And sometimes it's not, but it just sort of breaks the pattern of what's happening. Sometimes it's important to include just useless information in, in a video just to confuse everyone that's watching it. You want your remote ID password in it? I think what they want is like 
my social security number. What is that? My street address. What are those things? I can't, it's, it's, it's basically Cool, thank you. I try, I try my best to have some sort of narrative or story or concept that is interesting to watch. I don't really like the idea of just going out with my camera and talking for no reason and then flying drones. That's not interesting. I didn't put my parking brake on. That's a problem. So like one thing I'm gonna mention is that don't buy like a nice camera. Don't even worry about it, okay? Just use your phone or even just use your GoPro. But if you're gonna use your GoPro, don't use the microphone on the GoPro. Get like a lavalier mic into your phone to record the audio to your phone and then sync the audio from the GoPro and your phone together and then you won't have audio because GoPro sounds like sometimes. Your equipment is not important, your camera, is not nearly as important as the story or the concept of what you're trying to do. Uh, for me, I don't, I mean, I use my main camera a lot just because it's the nicest video quality. But sometimes if I'm like, oh shit, I forgot my camera, I'll just bust my phone out and I'll just start recording on my phone. Like it doesn't look bad. I mean, you could do whole videos on your phone if that's all you have. If the content and the story that you're telling is compelling enough, the equipment doesn't matter. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't be a lot better if you have nice gear. I don't want that to be like a discouragement. Don't go out and buy like a Sony a7S III or a FX3 and drop like four to five grand on camera equipment if you don't know how to tell a fucking story. Sorry, I sweared. I'm not allowed to swear in this video. That's just one of the main rules and I keep breaking the rules. Oh well. YouTube is not an easy platform to grow on because the algorithm is very picky. It's very strict, especially with the long form videos, it's very strict. But if you put a lot of time and energy into producing a video that is relevant to a community that is very specific and that you can target, you know, like a product or something like that, and you can make a really compelling piece of content that people wanna watch, it will get picked up. And from what I understand, all you gotta do is be good, you know, and don't suck, that's it. Pro learn how to like make video movies. Learn how to do vid filmmaking, that's it. Spend like a couple of hours doing YouTube shit about filmmaking, that's all I would say. It's a really simple, simple concept. And if you can't understand it, um, you should just, I don't know, just give up, I guess, quit.